somebody that is hungry. And then your vibes, your vibes are not real. If you don't understand what we are saying, thank you for fighting my battles for me. Jehovah, the one who fights for me. Jehovah Olubeja. What's the right word for Olubeja? Yes, sir. Defender. Defender. Okay, she defender. And Komuto, but uh, we, can, we can let it go. Amen. Thank you for fighting my battles for me. Jehovah, my rock. Jehovah, my glory. Jehovah, my defender. Thank you for fighting my battles for me. He said, I will fight for you and you will hold your peace. Do you understand what we're talking about? So we're going to sing that song with meaning. Sing it with understanding. Sing it with revelation. to minister to you this morning. 
and from his word. Say, Lord, open my eyes, open my heart to behold your glory from your word. Even this morning, Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to behold you, to experience you, to encounter you, to touch you. Even this morning, let your word minister to the deepest longings of our hearts. Let your word empower. Let your word instruct. Let your word direct. Let your word pull down. Let your word build up. Let your word bring restoration into our lives. Thank you because every valley shall be exalted and every hill shall be brought down. And Christ alone shall be glorified in every life that is here, in our affairs and our situations and our circumstances. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. A amen and amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know something? As I was um, reading the Preciouses this morning. How many people read Preciouses this morning? Did you, did you see that joke? You know? So when I saw the topic, I said, oh, this, okay. But the story... In the message caught me. And I didn't know when I started laughing, you know, all by myself. Back pains or death pains. And uh, the story says, a woman fed every member of her household with mushroom soup. Now you need to be careful with mushroom, okay? Anyway, she fed every member of her household with mushroom soup including her cat and the cat finished the mushroom soup and licked the plate and after a few moments the cat began to roll on the ground as if the cat just ate poison ah! quickly she went to the vet and said this what happened to my cat this was going on and, and the vet said bring the cat we have to treat the cat and every member of your family go to the hospital so she ran back home Ask, what did she see when she got home? Uh, you didn't ask me now. What did she see? I, I said, ask, what did she see when she got home? Uh -huh. Now you have asked, I will tell you. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, some people don't know how to tell stories. You must know how to tell stories. Anyway, she got back home and she found that the cat had delivered kittens. Many kittens. Beautiful kittens. She thought the cat had been poisoned. Unknown to her, when the cat was rolling on the ground, the, the cat was in labor pain, bad pains, because the cat wanted to produce. Amen. Which pain is your own pain this morning? May your pain turn to glory. May, may, may your pain bring out beauty. Do you understand? When we travel in prayer, it is to produce. The Bible says, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. That was talking about Israel. That in the pains of Israel, glory will come out. What came out? The Messiah came out. The Messiah came out. Hallelujah. So as we travel in prayer, some don't even, they're not disciplined to travel in prayer. They don't know how to, how to travel in prayer. They don't even see the place of prayer. Have you prayed? I prayed. I prayed. But travail in prayer is different from I prayed do you understand what I'm talking about I prayed, you have prayed and you are praying you are there in prayers they look for you, they find you there the posture of your heart is the posture of prayers you are driving but you are in prayer hallelujah, you are walking behind your computer but you are in prayer the posture is the posture of prayer you will produce, you will bring forth after the manner of glory, amen because as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth. If you can help me with this sound, it's not sounding like me. I don't like the echo. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But can you hear me? Am I audible? Praise God forever. Why come to church? Because of this. Why come to church? Because of what we are experiencing. What do we experience? We experience God. We experience grace. We experience His beauty. We experience His presence. We experience his power. That's why we come to church. Hallelujah. You will agree with me that if you are all alone in your house, it's just you or you, just you and your wife, it will be good, oh, but it can't be like this. Hallelujah. There's something about it. When people of faith gather together, 
and worship the Lord. There's something that happens. The atmosphere becomes different. The experiences become different. Amen. I said amen. amen. Praise God. Why come to church? So we started this series uh, last Sunday. And I told us that uh, it wouldn't end last Sunday. And I'm telling us again today that it's not going to end uh, today either. Amen. Because we're not in a rush over this. And we have said the church is not the building. We have said the church is not a physical place. We have said the church is not uh, an auditorium. We have said the church refers to people, people of faith, people who believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Hallelujah. We have come to understand that the church refers to the called out ones because like we know, the Bible was not uh, written in English language. The original translation of the Bible in the Old Testament was rendered in Hebrew, some parts in Aramaic, and the New Testament was rendered in Greek. Amen. Greek language. So the English we have in our hands is a translation of the original languages. So the word used for church in the original is the word ecclesia. Amen. And the word ecclesia means the called out ones. We are a people called out of a place unto a place. When God called Israel out of Egypt, he called Israel to a better place. He called Israel to a place flowing with milk and honey. It was not like where they were before. He called them out of the house of bondage unto the place of liberty and freedom. He called them out of slavery unto the place of glory and liberty to experience his goodness. That was what the Lord did. So the called out ones are the ones who, who have been called out of sin and shame and the mystery of darkness unto the glorious light of the Son of God. And First Peter 2 9 says, we are who? A chosen generation, a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a peculiar people, a people called out of darkness into the wonderful light of the Son of God. That's who we are. We are the church. We are living stones being built up into a spiritual storehouse. That is is holy and, and offering sacrifices unto God that are acceptable unto him. So the church is the believer in Christ. Amen. We have seen that. We also made one point that some have found quite engaging that the church is not an organization but that the church is a spiritual organism. The church is not life requiring. The church is life giving. So when we gather together like this, there is a flow of the life of God in our midst. Hallelujah. And uh, John chapter 7 and verse 38, what does it say? If any man believeth in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow the rivers of living waters. You are a believer. He's a believer. She's a believer. She's a believer. She's a believer. Out of your belly, your innermost being, not your stomach. Out of your innermost being, out of the core of your person, out of your spirit, in other words, shall flow the rivers of living waters. And they are not just rivers, they are rivers of the water of life. If you go back to Revelation 22, you will have an idea of that river. In Revelation 22, it said, flowing from the throne of grace and mercy is the river of the water of life. And wherever that river got to, whatever was dead came back to life. That river guaranteed fruitfulness on a monthly basis. There were fruits for each month. It was the river of glory, the river of sustenance, the river of provision, the river of satisfaction, the river of fulfillment. Hallelujah. And when we gather together, you bring your river. I bring my river. You have the river. I have the river. We bring our individual streams together and there is a greater flow. So somebody beside you is worshiping. Somebody in front of you is bowing down. And you are looking what's going on. Before you know you two, you say, ah, listen, let me also, you get caught up in the flow. You get somebody behind you is praying in the spirit. Before you know it, you also you are praying in the spirit. Amen. That's how, that's how it happens. You are weak. The people around you are strong. Before you know it, the strength of God will come upon you. You see, Saul was exposed to that atmosphere. The sons of the prophets were meeting. Saul got there. The spirit of God came upon him and he also began to prophesy. He was not part of them, but that power of association came upon him. And so we have said in Psalm 16 and verse 11, thou will show me the path of life in your presence is fullness of, God, of joy and at your right hand 
pleasures abound forevermore. Don't forget that. So when we gather together like that, we are in God's presence. We have come to God's presence. And who are the people who have come to God's presence? His children. The church are the children of God. Who are those who have come to God's presence? People of faith. People of faith. And so we are the church. Let's read a few scriptures and uh, we'll continue again. <laughs> Acts chapter 8 and verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church. If the church were a building, Saul must have been making havoc of the building, of the stones, of the concrete, of the electrical fittings in the building. But the church is not one of those. The church is individuals entering into every house. So he made havoc of the church. But what was he doing? Entering into every house. Who do you find in a house? Human beings. Amen. And healing men and women. You see that? Healing men and women. Believers in Christ. Where? Committing them to prison. Romans 16 and verse 5. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epanitos, who is the first person of Achaia unto Christ. The church that is where? In their house. <laughs> in their house. So, <laughs> you can have church in your house. When believers gather together, because I've had people say that all these new generation churches, are you sure they are churches if they are gatherings of believers in Christ? Hallelujah. They make up a church. If there are just five of them there, they are a church called out once. It's not the building that makes the church. <laughs> it is the people who are the church. I once had a retired clergyman refer to you know, the new generation churches, if I can use that expression, as our churches told Luruko, churches that don't have names. Amen. We don't need to have a name. We have Jesus. Amen. That is our identity. Christ is our identity. We do not seek any other identity outside Christ. Amen. The church is those who have identified with Christ. Who is the church? The body of Christ. So, you don't, your identity is irrelevant now. It is Christ. The church, the body. Of Christ, Christ, the head of a church. Amen. I said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Why come to church? Why come to who you are? Uh, so who you are must come to who you are, and then let's have church together. Praise God forever. The church is where the saints are. First Corinthians 16, 19. Wherever the saints are, that is where you have the church. Let's read. The churches of Asia salute you. Aquila and Priscilla salute you. Much in the Lord. With the church that is in their house. Wherever believers are, there the church is. And uh, what do you think our experiences should be when we gather together as the church? As the fullness of a body of Christ. The arms are in place. The neck is in place. The hands are in place. The kidneys are in place. The liver is in place. The lungs are in place. Uh, you know, the, the heart, everything is in place. The systems are in place. The organs are in place. Amen. Circulatory is okay. Respiratory system is okay. Musculoskeletal is okay. The legs are in place. The fingers, the toes, the eyes. You, you understand what I'm talking about? The body is complete. <laughs> if the body is complete, what do you expect the body to do? To function effectively. To function maximally. Hallelujah. There is even a dimension of synergy or synergy, whichever pronunciation you prefer. There's a dimension of synergy in the church. Amen. Whereas one was chasing a thousand, Ecclesiastes 4, one, one was chasing a thousand, two will do what? Put 10,000 to flight. Or Ecclesiastes 4 says two are better than one for they have a good reward for their labor. It was Deuteronomy that said, whereas one was chasing a thousand, two will put 10,000 to flight. I like that. One could Chase, pursue 1,000. Two, ordinarily, should be able to pursue how many? 2,000. But synergy says, they say, when forces combine together, their combined power is greater than what each individual component will achieve. Whereas one could chase 1,000, two will not chase 10,000. That's not what the Bible says. Two are not chasing 10,000. Because in our minds, uh, we assume that that scripture is saying, whereas one will chase 1,000, that two will chase 10,000. No. Help me tell your neighbor, no. That's not what the Bible says. What the Bible says is that two will put to flight 10,000. 
Hallelujah. I like that. Two will put to flight ten thousand synergy, spiritual synergy. So when we gather together like this, what you could achieve in your own private prayer closet will be like child's play compared to what together we can achieve as a corporate body. Amen. Because when we gather together like this, as local assemblies, we enjoy what is called a corporate anointing. We can join hands together and pray and agree over something. It shall be done. Hallelujah. You know, post-COVID, the post-COVID church is wanting or attempting to change the narrative. We must refuse that. And those are part of the signs of the end. We must refuse that. Because some are saying, I can have church at home. I can be online and have church and I don't to go physically to a building. Ah, that is not the design. Don't vary the design. Help me tell somebody, don't vary the design. Listen, as long as we follow the pattern, the glory will manifest. If we don't follow the pattern, forget the glory. The glory is attracted to the pattern. When we follow the pattern, he said to Moses, see that thou buildest according to the pattern that was showed thee on the mount. In Exodus chapter 40, after Moses built according to the pattern, what happened? The glory of the Lord manifested. The glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Amen. Why? The pattern attracts the glory. Follow the pattern and you will attract the glory. Stay with your ideas and let the glory depart. May the glory not depart. Who is still with me up to now? Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Don't mind me. I'm not following my notes, but... I'm struggling to go back to my notes. Hallelujah. Mm. So the church is where the saints are. So we're asking, why hold meetings? Why congregate? Why come together? It is because when we come together like that, there's synergy involved. And we gather together for association. 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 We said that last week, I remember, association. When we gather together, Proverbs 13, 20. What does it say? Proverbs 13 and 20 says, He who comes with the wise shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. Let me put it this way. He who comes with the wealthy shall be wealthy, but a companion of uh, poor people shall be destroyed. He who comes uh, with non-entities shall become a non-entity. Hallelujah. Remember the story of Ben Carson's mom. She was poor. She had a son, but she was working for rich people. She was a housemaid, and she began to learn from rich people how their children talk, how their parents relate to them, how they comport themselves, and she will get home and tell her poor son, don't talk like that anymore. Start talking like uh, these people have been working with talk. Start thinking like these people think. Hallelujah. You are in a church. Uh, you have not gotten the culture of a church. There's something we call assimilation. Membership assimilation. You are in a church, uh, but you haven't assimilated. You, you, the church is not in you. You know, the culture of that house is not in you. You can't benefit from that church. Believe me, that is why you must be careful the kinds of church you go. Amen. The Holy Ghost, uh, or God, God is our Father. Praise the Lord. <laughs> God is our father. It's like the Holy Ghost mothers us, is our mother. But your church nurtures you. Amen. In, in church, you are nurtured. In church, you are fed. And you are a product of what you eat. Praise the Lord. It is what the bird eats that the bird flies with. You have heard that said in, in Yoruba language before. True or false? Help me tell your neighbor that in Yoruba. If your neighbor understands Yoruba. If your neighbor doesn't understand Yoruba, help me translate to your neighbor. Hallelujah. Hmm. Mm. If, it is in, if it is not in you, you can't fly with it. Did you get what I said? <laughs> it has to be in you for you to fly with it. Praise the Lord. Your life is a product of what you've been ingesting and digesting and bringing out. Hallelujah. Amen. So we gather together for association. We gather together for the purpose of God to be accomplished in our lives. Philippians 2 and 13. Can you bring it up? Or I'll read from here. For it is God which walketh in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. When we gather together as a church like this, we understand what the good pleasure, what the good mind, what the good counsel of the Lord is. He walks in us. He walks through us. His good pleasure. For instance, you are in church this morning. The good pleasure of God for you is healing. The good pleasure of the Lord for you this morning is health. The good pleasure of the Lord for you this morning is peace. Is, is somebody with me this morning? Hallelujah. The good pleasure of the Lord for you is supply, is wisdom, is fruitfulness. Hallelujah. When we gather together like this, we expose ourselves to the workings of the one who brings about the pleasure of his will in our lives. 
When we gather together like this, it's for harmony. It's for unity. Amos 3, 3, can two walk together except they be agreed? No way. So when we gather together like this, we bond. We bond. How do we bond? What we have been feeding on is the same. Amen. So after a while, we start looking alike in a family. Have you seen couples who didn't look alike before? After some years of marriage, people will say, <laughs> one day, my wife and I went to visit the Osubos many years ago. This center just started. That must have been 1999 or year 2000. We did not meet them at home. And so as we were leaving, we saw their neighbors. And we said, oh, please, uh, help us to tell them that we came. And uh, I hate it when, when I introduce myself. I, I hate it, so I don't do it. I don't introduce myself as Pastor Tolu. How can I be Pastor Tolu? I'm Tolu Okusanya. Amen. Take it or leave it. If my Tolu Okusanya is not enough for you. <laughs> you know some people, they ask them, can you introduce yourself? <laughs> by the grace of God. When they start like that, by the grace of God. <laughs> by the grace of God. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I said, please help us tell them that Tolu and Blanley that we came. Thank you very much. And then one of them was talking to them and saying, Take what I brought in one. Say, their brother say, say, he say, he lay your cone on leg more. He lay your bunny on la bro. You know, me, I'm the taller version. My wife is the chair, you understand. If you see anything, Sabalani don't mind them. Hallelujah. I had to go that route. I, I can't marry somebody my height now. I, all of us will not be, no. Amen. Praise the Lord. Haven't you noticed husbands that are, have wives that are, Husbands that are, how wives that are, you know? It's not marriage class, but I'm just minding my business here. But because we've been together for some years, because my nose is not my wife's nose. In our household, everybody has this nose except my wife. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if I have this and she doesn't have this, how can somebody say we look alike? But there's something that has happened. I have rubbed off on her. She has rubbed off on me over time. When we gather together like this as church and we keep receiving the same spiritual nutrients, after a while, after a while, we're beginning to look alike in the realm of the spirit. There is even something about divine cover. Because you belong to a house. Do you know what happened to Apostle Paul? Is it Acts 26? His Apostle Paul stood and said, you should have listened to me and not have loosed from Crete to gain this ham. Do you gain ham? You don't gain ham. But that was old King James. To gain this ham. He said, anyway, <laughs> there stood by me this night the angel of God, the one whose I am and whom I serve. And has told me that there will be no loss of any man's life on this boat except the, except the ship. Amen. He said, why? For Because you are sailing with me. He said, the angel appeared to him and said, you and the men sailing with you, their missions were different. Apostle Paul was going on a mission. It was a spiritual mission. The Lord had told him, as you have testified to, of me concerning me in Jerusalem, you will testify concerning me where? In Rome. So it was in the will and the design of God for Apostle Paul to go to Rome. So when Agabus, you know, began to prophesy and say that the, uh, thus said the Holy Ghost, so shall the owner of this belt be bound hands and foot in Jerusalem. And they started telling him, don't go in Rome, I beg your pardon. And they started telling him, don't go, don't go. He said, ah, what mean ye to mourn and to break my heart? He said, not only am I ready to go to, to Rome, I'm ready to die. Ah, he said, if you leave, leave this one. He's ready to die. But he knew what the Lord has said to him. Do you know 276 of them were spared? Why? Because they happened to be in the same boat with a man on a divine mission. There is a level of cover, a dimension of cover we enjoy based on the local assembly we belong to. That is why you must be careful where you go. You must be careful what you expose yourself to. The spiritual meals you receive, you must be careful. Hallelujah. If your meal is corrupted, your life will be corrupted. If your meal is pure and undefiled, your life will be pure and undefiled. Believe me. If, if your meal is deficient, your life will be deficient. If your meal is balanced, your life will be balanced. Amen. Somebody, 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 somebody the guy is a rascal. I'm laughing because I remember what he said. He said, Pastor, he said, Pastor, he said, 
He said, hmm. <clears throat> the church will go and you will lose our church. Tawanlo. He said, Koni window. He said, the church does not have window. He said, and it's only for men. He said, women are not allowed. I said, eh? I said, ah. He said, hmm. He said, no windows. He said, when we are praying, when we are praying, when we are praying. He said, we'll be sweating like this. He said, ah. he said, it's not your own type of church. Whether it is, or you are coming to Vine Branch, where we ask us to lift up holy hands. I'm going to lift up holy hands in the presence of the Lord. And we say, pray. And some people are, hey, may God spare some people. You know, the cover we are enjoying is this corporate cover. As long as we are called by the name of Christ, we are the church. We are the church. Somebody say, thank God for the church. Thank God because I belong to the church. So the church is for nurturing. The church is for nurturing. Second Timothy 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. <laughs> I like that. All scripture is profitable. All scripture is inspired, but all scripture is profitable. There is no part of scripture that is not profitable. Song of Solomon, profitable. Some people even use Song of Solomon to send love letters to people. So is it not profitable? Because at the end of the day, the person became their wife now. Amen. Pastor Daku, oh, was that what you did? Okay, that's not what you did. Okay, I thought maybe that was what you did, you know. <laughs> Thou art beautiful, my love. Thine eyes are like the eyes of a dove, my love. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's not what me I did, though. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, I, I didn't even know that Song of Solomon existed as an unbeliever. Anka <laughs> Bible. If you see an unbeliever that is reading the Bible, that one is not far from the kingdom at all. Praise the Lord. How then do you explain a believer who does not read the Bible? That one is a misfit in the kingdom. You don't read the Bible and you're a believer in Christ, you are a misfit in the kingdom. What are you doing in the kingdom? If you're not here from your father. We're not bastards. We are children. Amen. Nurturing. Second Timothy 3, 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. When we gather together in church, there are times that we receive reproof. In other words, uh, our negative ways of life are exposed so that we can be corrected. Hmm. Doctrine, we can be taught the word of God. Correction, we can be corrected when we are in error. Instruction, we can be trained and taught in righteousness. Why? That the man of God who is first a child of God you don't become a man on the day you are born. We are all born as children. Only Adam came into being as a man. Notice how I said, how I said that. Adam came into being, into existence as a man. Every other person after Adam had to be conceived and delivered and grow into adulthood so that the man of God, who is first a child of God, might be perfect. The word perfect there means matured. Might be matured. Thoroughly furnished. He's furnished. He's furnished. Unto all good works, he's furnished. Do you understand the meaning of the root word in the Greek for the word furnished? Is this a carpenter? When a carpenter is working on a piece of furniture, I don't know whether carpenters still do it. When we were younger, carpenters would put pencil at the back of their hair and they put their legs on top of their wooden table like this and then they hold the saw and they'll be singing as they are cutting something, you know? Amen. They'll be singing. You know, Lawe Rebe? You don't know Lawe Rebe? Lawe Rebe. <laughs> Some of you are so, 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 you are, you are so psychedelic, you are so, you are so, ah, amen. Some of us are village boys. Anyway, the carpenter will bring out his, uh, is it range, they call that thing or something like this. He will L-shape something. What's, what's it called, that L-shape thing? 
is it line or a T-square or something, you know? He brings it down. He takes a measurement. He brings the pencil. He marks it. He marks it. He cuts it. He measures it. He cuts it again. He cuts it. He p- p- brings the pieces together again. He, he, and then he joins. And then he joins. Uh, and then he takes sandpaper, you know, and he begins to sand it to make it smooth, to make it smooth, to make it smooth. After a while, the furniture is looking like it. And then he sprays it. He puts the varnish, the polish on top of it. Uh, and so on and so on. He decorates it. And uh, that's piece of wood started raw. It was raw. It was a piece of wood. It, it had to be subject to process of fining and refining so that it can become what is beautiful to behold. We come to Christ raw. We all come to Christ raw. We come with our nuances. We come with our idiosyncrasies. When I came to Christ, I came to Christ as a smoker. My first two weeks in faith, I was still smoking. I will read Bible and I will smoke. I, I, I was smoking. St. Maurice will be in my hand. Bible will be open before me. I was ready. It was Holy Ghost baptism that, that delivered me from that one. Amen. And then I realized, ah. So I've not smoked for the past two weeks. That's how that one went. Do you, you understand? We come raw. Some people think you must be good before you come to God. Who are you? To be good before you. Can you make yourself good? Jesus said, no man is good. You know, they were calling Jesus a good teacher, good master. He said, no man is good except God alone. In Bolo, to be good. Where is good coming from? One, one funny. It is God who makes us good. It is grace who makes us good. It is the blood of Jesus who makes us good. Is someone listening to me this morning? Hallelujah. And that is why you must give room for growth to someone you see in church whose life by your standard is not measuring up. Allow the person time (laughs) far. You know a lot of people say far. Allow the person some time far. Amen. Because the church is a home of sick people who have come for treatment. So we receive different kinds of treatment. For some people, it is so chronic, every treatment they are receiving is intravenous. They must set up line for them and give them IV. And after a while, they introduce uh, IM, intramuscular. Because the disease, the, the, the viral load has reduced. Who is with me up to now? Huh. Amen. Some spiritual my sin. Do you understand? Some holiness my sin. Holiness queen must enter. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And so each time we come, another dose. Each time we come, another dose. Each time we come, another dose. But the beauty of church as a hospital is we don't leave that hospital. Normal hospital, after a while, somebody was sick in UK, you know, they administered treatment on him, and they said to him that, they had told him in Nigeria, he felt when he gets to UK, everything fine. They said, what is doing you? That's Nigerian English. What is doing you? In Tonsheyi. What is doing you is such that it will reverse by itself. Your, the right side of your body will start work before the left side of your body starts work. Ah, there are different categories of sickness, so also in the realm of the spirit, there are different categories of malady. For some people here, your right side will start to work first before your <laughs> left side. They told him. And when he got to the UK, because he's British, that was exactly what they told him. And in Nigeria, they were giving him, uh, was it pentasocin, something to heal the pain, to subside the pain. That was what they were giving him. When he got to UK, he was past the he said, what is this? He said, I'm in pain. You are giving birth some more. He said, even in Nigeria, they were giving me. They said, sorry, that's the best you can get. And the consultant came the next day or so. I said, uh, when are you going home? He said, ah, when am I going home? I'm not healed yet. They said, your right side will start to work by itself. And then the left side will start to work by itself. He said, that's what they told me in Nigeria. He said, they, they were correct. So some of us that think that there's nothing about our country. See see yourselves now. But you know what they wanted to do? They needed his bed. So they wanted him to go home. Because the bed is 
to be used for somebody else. In church, you have your bed, I have my bed, and there is bed for the person that is coming. That's the difference. You don't leave this bed. <laughs> you don't leave Christ. Who is with me up to now? Praise the Lord. Okay, let, let's, let's go on. That the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. With church is a place of refuge. Church is a place of refuge. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and he is secure. He's safe. Proverbs 18.10. Place of refuge. Place of protection. Hallelujah. Do you know when you are out there, it's like you are exposed. When you are in here, you come for refuge. You are fortified. So that when you go out there, you are enamelled. At times we hear things in church. At times you hear what the preacher is not saying. Has it happened to you before? You hear what the preacher is not saying. He's saying something else. You are hearing something else. That's because the Holy Spirit is the one at work. Hallelujah. And what you've received is what you carry with you. And that, so your experiences become different from that of others. Amen. In the world, there's tribulation. But what did Jesus say? Rejoice, I have overcome the world. Amen. Ha. Ah. Church is the place of hope. Our gathering is a gathering of hope. The world does not give hope. Many years ago, there was a, 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 a group of, or a gang, robbery gang, operating in Bodija, old Bodija, new Bodija, Ashibashon, operating there. They had killed some people. They had robbed. And, you know, so it was embarrassing. This was uh, late 90s, early 2000s. It was embarrassing. Embarrassing. In fact, then you never left your gate unlocked. Because if your gate, if you just put the padlock around it, it could be in the morning. They could strike at any time. 7 a.m., 8 a.m. Or if you left your gate wide open, they would just drive into your compound. You know? And they had killed and they had done. Anyway, they set up, you know, um, intelligence networks and they were nabbed. And when they were nabbed and they were interviewed, <laughs> where did I get the story from? You know, I, I told you the other day that I'm a pastor, but I have street boys. I want boys, man. I said, Pastor, I want more boys, you know. My boys, Toshisha, I want more. <laughs> so, they said they, they have started singing. You know, that's how they were hunting corny, hunting corny. That means they started confessing. <laughs> he said, their ages, 19, 20, 21, 22. And that they said, they know they only have five years to live. And that after five years, they die. But at those five years, they will enjoy the maximum that they can enjoy. They buy the cars they want to buy, live anyhow they want to live and so on for five years. Ah. I said, is something wrong with them? Let me ask you about that in Yoruba. You know? Some, why must I have pleasure for five years? Why do I want to die after five years? When I have opportunity to live many more years, no hope. No hope. But the gospel of Jesus, the good news of salvation, is the good news of hope. Amen. Hope does not disappoint. Hope maketh not ashamed. Hallelujah. It's the message of hope. Amen. There is hope for Nigeria. At our own polling station yesterday, you know, after I had, uh, you, you know, you go and look for your name on a list. You now pick your serial number on that list. You go to them. I found my serial number. I'm 864. They said, now, take this tally number. So they gave me tally number. My tally number was 219. So, yes, yeah, so, uh, and I waited in the hot sun. I sat on one tree like this. My buttocks started paining me. I stood up. I walked around, you know, and so on and so on. Anyway, until it was my turn. So I now looked at the man and said, ah, Oga, are you an uh, INEC official? He said, no. He said, me and this man were volunteers. We're only doing this so that this place can be orderly. I said, thank you. I said, you are the people that always make us know that there is hope for our nation. Amen. I said, volunteer culture is not part of our culture in Nigeria. I hope you know. You left school. You just graduated. They've not called you up for youth call and so on. You are not volunteering in anywhere. Do you know you can volunteer? So, uh, well, I have three months to, so rather than sitting at home, can I come and do something? But they say, how much, how much will you pay me? What's in it for me? 
you know. So I said, there is hope for our nation when we see things like that. The gospel is the gospel of hope. Romans chapter 5, let's read. Amen. Hope. We gather together like this, there is hope. Romans 5 and verse 1. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Today does not define you. Because of a hope dimension, we are assured of a better tomorrow. We are in hope of the glory of God. You know what that means? There's glory ahead. Help me tell somebody there's glory ahead. Mm -mm. Your present circumstances don't define you. It's the glory and the hope of the glory you carry that defines you. I know your tomorrow will be better. Tell your neighbor. I know your tomorrow will be better. Uh, your, your today may be the way it is, but your tomorrow is going to be better. Amen. Praise the Lord. My shoes might look like that of Abdul. If your name is Abdul, don't be annoyed though. But you know, that's how they say, you know, Abdul shoes. Somebody said, the shoes he used to wear before, holes were in them. And that if you needed sand, just contact him. Because the shoes will gather sand. That if you now got to where he was going and he removed, he will pour out sand. Pour out sand. That if he does that a couple of times, you will have sand to build your house. You know? <laughs> of course, that's an exaggeration. But that was what the guy was saying. Amen. Hope. The fact that your shoes today are gathering sand does not mean tomorrow you won't be giving out shoes. We have a pastor, I won't mention his name, in Vine Branch. In those early days of Vine Branch, pastor would just look at you and give you an assignment. So you better be prepared. So that day, as he walked to church, pastor just said, Pastor so-and-so, you are leading the prayers. And the prayers will be led for 30 minutes. And he said on the way to church, his shoe gave way. You know, when the heel comes off, the sole and the heel come off, but there's little left. You know how you walk? You do like this. The other one is okay, so you can leave that one, but this other one, you'll drag it. So he said he managed himself to church. He, pastor now said, lead prayers in front of the whole church. So he said, ah, he stood in one place. For the 30 minutes. He didn't move anywhere. He said, and uh, probably that was the only shoe that he had. You know, but the same person down the line cannot count the number of shoes that. So, some people, why turn your back on God because of present challenges? There's hope. There's hope. We have hope. When Christ was in the grave, who was rejoicing? The devil was rejoicing. We got him where we want him. He's not coming out again. We told you guys uh, that, that he's a fraud star. He's not the truth. And so we told you on the third day, where was the devil? On the third day, he rose again. And when the people of the company of Christ uh, heard about his resurrection, they said, we told you. Did we tell you? We told you. The triumph of the wicked is short. The triumph of the wicked is short. Walk in hope. Remain in hope. It will get better. Where do you hear such messages? In church. If you tune to T CNN, you won't hear such messages. Oh. You hear there was an earthquake in Turkey and Syria. 47,000 now dead. 48,000. Another earthquake. One happened. Another one happened. The, the devil is wicked. You, you, bad news. But the church is the home of good news. And the good news, we have uh, hope. Somebody say, I have hope. The background like we have said, the church is Jesus. The church is Jesus. The church is Jesus. Do you hear what I said? The church is Jesus. Why? Your body is you. The church is the body of Christ. His body is him. The church is Jesus. He bought her with his blood. He paid for her with his blood. So the church is his possession. We are his possession. Hallelujah. What? Know you know that your body is at the temple of God and that God dwells in you by his spirit? The Bible says we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. Amen. Ephesians 5, 25 to 30. The church is his possession. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That is, we are to love our wives sacrificially. Amen. Sacrificially. Sacrificially. And the Bible is not saying when your wife is kind, when your wife is gentle, when your wife is respectful, love her. So there must be no condition attached to loving your wife. Hello? 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yeah. Who is this talking about? Christ. 
that he might present it to himself a glorious church. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but I should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives. So it was a comparison between how Christ saw the bride, his church. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. 29. For no man ever yet hated his own body, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. Do you see that? So we are members. Acts 20, 28. Take it therefore unto yourselves and unto all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his blood. So Christ uh, purchased the blood. The church is his possession. Hmm. So he has preeminence over the church. I, I have many scriptures there. The church is God's family. The church is God's family. So number one, the church is Jesus. Number two, the church is God's family. So God is a family man. God is family oriented. When we say man for God, that is just, he allows us to do that. Because it's not man, it's not a physical being. So church is God's family. Jeremiah 31 and verse 1. At the same time, say the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? And they shall be my people. Amen. At the same time, say the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? And they shall be my people. He's the God of all the families of Israel. In the New Testament, we are Israel now. The church is Israel in the New Testament. Why? Romans chapter 2 and verse 28. Let's read. Romans chapter 2. We are Israel today. Can not say I'm Israel today? You may be living in Nigeria, but you are Israel today, spiritually. Amen. So whatever covenant is over Israel is the covenant that is active over your life today. That's what we're saying. Romans 2 and verse 28. For he is not a Jew. For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. So being a citizen of Israel as a nation, that's being a Jew outwardly, carrying an Israeli passport, saying I'm from Israel. You know, they, they put Y in front and say I'm from Israel. Saying that you are a Jew is not what makes you a Jew. For he's not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh because they believe in circumcision was part of the law. But he is a Jew which is one inwardly. Uh -huh. So who is a Jew? Who, who is a descendant of Israel? Who is Israel today? He is one, he is a Jew which is one inwardly. And circumcision is not outward now of the flesh. Circumcision is that of the heart in the spirit and not in the letter, not in the law of Moses, not in the Torah. Whose praise is not of men but of God. So who is the Israel of the New Testament? The church. So we are God's family. So I'm God's family. Do you understand the, the, the place of family? Family. Someone say family. Family. You have a name. You have an identity. The family name becomes your identity. It sends messages to people who know you in that family. Amen. Praise the Lord. There are some names when you hear in our nation you have an idea of, of that family, of, of, of the pedigree, you know, of that family and so on. True or false? Amen. When you hear the name Aulowo, above me Aulowo, and someone says, I am so, 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 so Aulowo. You say, which Aulowo is your own? Are you from Ikene? The man the person says Ikene, you link the person to Aulowo. Am I right or wrong? Uh-huh. Praise the Lord. Family. If you know anybody whose name is Oyenusi, there's a generation that doesn't know anything about that name. So if they say somebody is Oyenusi, say, oh, Oyenusi, okay. And the person now says, Oyenusi family is one family. Ah, we made you so new, one family. Say, oh, okay. So. Oyenusi was a notorious armed robber in the 70s. For those who don't know. Uh -huh. See what the name, see the impression the name has how many remember Anini and Monday Osubo? So if, if you are in Edo area or you come down to the side and say, My name is something, and you say, Hey, Anini. Which Anini is Edo? Okay, Edo. <laughs> Family. Family. Praise the Lord. You can meet a young man and you say, what's your name? Young man, you say, my name is Idako. My son's name is Idako. What's your first name? My first name is Cornerstone. Say, I know one pastor, Idako, that's my dad. Ah, you are pastor Idako, so Omolu Abine. Family. Are you seeing it? Family. 
somebody's uh, mom was sick. I went to visit the mom. Okay, let me not even use that illustration. Let me use my own illustration. I've said it many years ago in church. When I was to get married in 1991, I needed to go and inform my sister who was living in Benin then. You know, and um, so I left church after service on Sunday, got to the motor park around uh, Idi and Ure area in the 90s, you know, and I got a vehicle, it's 504, then it was 504, station wagon, going to Benin. So I now told the driver that I'm going to number 50, some, number 76, Obazes, Obazes Street, you know, and he said, no problem. I said, when you drop people at uh, Uselu Motor Park, I'll give you extra, drop me in the place. He said, no problem. We got to Benin around 7 o'clock, it was beginning to get dark, we got there, Obazes Street, Enye Yomi, my people, it doesn't reach number 76. Ah. I looked at the address, I said 76. The man said, sorry, I have to go. I paid him off. I said, go. I said, I will go up the road, come down the road. I'll be looking at the house numbers. Then I saw one old man. He sat in front of a shop with a woman. He said, my son, come. He said, what are you looking for? I said, I'm going to my sister's house. I'm from Mebadon. I'm going to my sister's house, number 76, Obaze Street. He said, this street ends at number 40 something or so. He said, it doesn't extend to 76. He said, today, is, and it was a Sunday. He said, hmm, where does your sister work? I said, I know where she works. Upper Mission. For Benin people, uh, Mission Road. Uh -huh. Upper. You know there is Upper, Lower. Uh -huh. I said, she works in Best Sellers. Upper Mission. He said, no problem. He said, you will sleep in my house today. Tomorrow, one of my children will take you to your sister's uh, place of work. I said, thank you very much. He said, this is Benin. And once it is getting dark, anything can happen. And you don't come from here. So I will be responsible for you. He took me to his house. He introduced me to his children. He said, we will sleep on the same bed. The man said, we'll, he said so that I won't be afraid. I said, no problem. He said, we'll sleep on the same bed. So he said, they should take me to the bathroom. I took my shower. And so he said, sleep. I ate rice and fried stew. You know, how can you cook rice? And you are putting a watery stew on top of rice. Ah, God forbid, but you know. So, so anyway... <laughs> in a stranger the man said oh mommy I, I, he, he spoke Yoruba he said I understand Yoruba I speak Yoruba but not too well since I've retired and I'm back home he said oh mommy what is your name I said Tulu Kusoya ah he said I retired from the police force and I know one uh, Kusoya I said you retired from the police force and you know one of Kusanya? He said, yes. I said, that was my uncle, sir. He said, say, say, lie. He said, what, what is your uncle's name? I said, to start with, my father is Festus Ido Okusanya, F-I. My father's, my father's nicknames. Uh, hmm. Anyway, let's leave that one. So I said, my father is Festus Ido. I said, his younger brother, Alaba, was the one that served in the police force, that retired from the police force. He said, Alaba? Yes, I said, that's my uncle. I said, Isaac Alaba. The man just grabbed me and hugged me as if he wanted to suffocate me. He said, young man, I will show you. He now went and opened his albums and brought out old pictures. When they were in police college in the 50s, he said, point to your uncle. When I'm not a bastard, I know my uncle. I pointed, he hugged me again. He said, ah! I didn't know. See, I didn't know where I was going. I found a good Samaritan who housed me. He now got to know that he knows my uncle, that they served together in the first family. I only mentioned Okusonya and that family. Are you, are you getting it? Church, family. <laughs> Some people don't understand the benefit of family. Church is family. Amen. The, uh, family. Huh. The man treated me like a king. I slept like a king. The following morning, so yeah, yeah, come and take my son, take him to his sister, and so on. Uh, you know where the commotion came from? My spelling. You know, Benin, consonants go together. O G H O G H O. Me and say Obaze, they say Oh, Obaze. 
That one reaches 76. The other, ah. Anyway, but family. Someone say family. He walked into an office. Tomorrow, Monday, Polaris Bank, Bodija Branch. You have an account there and you're thinking, how do I get cash today? And somebody spots you from the other side in the banking hall. I say, is that not the man I saw in church yesterday? That face looks familiar. And the person is noble enough to come to the front desk and say, can you come, sir? Do you go to Vine Branch? Yes, hope there's no problem. Which Vine Branch? Mokola or Akwata? Yeah, Akwata. Were you in church yesterday? Yes, I was in church. Who preached yesterday? Pastor Tolu preached. What did he talk about? Why come to church? It's you. Uh, do you know our church? That's my church. What have you come to do? Uh, what's your mom? That's the next thing. But guess what? I don't have cash. Not even 200 naira. I don't know how I'm going to get to church. So forget church today. That, so tomorrow I will, the struggle will start again to, to, for me to go and look for cash. And God had planned something. And you cut yourself away from that. Do you see how some of us miss out on some things? I can tell you stories after stories. But let's go on. Church is God's family. So God is uh, the God of the family, of his children. Ephesians 3, 14 to 15, as I round up. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. We come from God. We are family members. The church is God's family. You know what happens in family? <laughs> families come together. Families interact. Families have differences. Families have disputes. Families fight. Families resolve their disputes. Family advance together. Families celebrate together. Family rejoice together. Family mourns together. Family cries together. Family shares one another's pains. Amen. Alagba is a twin. And you know there's something about twins. Amen. Praise the Lord. He could be here and at the same time he's with his twin. True or false? He could be here and there was some time that something happened. He had a crisis some time. Guess who came to report him to me? His twin brother. I can tell that. Don't worry. I won't say. <laughs> Hallelujah. His twin brother said, Pastor, I've come to report my twin to you. This and this and this and this and this and this. And I know he will listen to you. I said, okay. thank you very much. And I summoned him. What is up? Family. Someone say Family. We can fight, oh. We can have disagreements, oh. But when they see you, they've seen the other one. Hallelujah. At times they see you and uh, <laughs> they see your younger brother. Amen. Because everybody is looking alike in the family. Somebody say family. family. When you are left to your bone, your family stays with you. you can, don't forget family. I was discussing with my friend. Childhood friend. And there was something that was going on that we wanted to resolve. And as I stepped into the matter, I said, when your father died in 1969, how old were you? He had a, an older sister, an older brother, and himself. Just three of them. Somebody say family. family. And then the father, the father, their father was in his 30s. He had an auto crash, and he died in 1969. And the mother, young widow, didn't even know how to go on with life. Guess what? One of her brother's in-law that her own husband adopted, who was living with them, now said uh, he will be taking over his brother's uh, estate so, uh, so that he can look after the children, the three children, but the condition will be that the woman must marry him. My friend said, his mother said, he will tolerate you this. The guy, you're in, <laughs> he bedwets. He said, you that have been training because her husband brought it. Are you getting it? Hey, that's life. Oh. So you have the good, you have the bad, you have the ugly family. But that woman resolved. I'm not going to forsake my children. 
if you're not doing anything for me, I will survive. She's a survivor today. Enjoying her children, family. Amen. You must have heard of stories of some mothers that forsook their children. But somebody, some way, somehow. Family. And when I keep saying family, don't think biological alone. Church is spiritual family. Amen. In a neighborhood self, you can have neighborhood family. Believe me. A, 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 a friend close by is better than a brother that is far away. Family. Family. Ah, part of the things I didn't say earlier was that when we come to church like this, we network. We network. We build nets. We now walk those nets into one another. They become a composite whole. Families. We network. Net. Net. You have a net. I have a net. We build and we weave the nets into each other. We network. Proverbs 17, 17, what does it say? Iron, sharpen it, iron. That same way a man sharpened the, count, the countenance of his friend. Ah, amen. Family, I'm going somewhere. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I want to end here. So the church is made up of imperfect people bonded together by the Father's love. So in church, we have imperfect people. You know, some people come here and say, it's not a good church, I won't go there again. So what makes that church to be, uh, to be a bad church? They don't greet anybody. They only play with the people they know. They don't play with those that they don't know. Have you forgotten that it is imperfect people that make up the church? You that you are complaining, are you perfect? Hallelujah. Amen. I come with my imperfection. You come with your imperfection. We come, we receive treatment. We receive treatment. We keep getting better. We keep getting better. We keep getting better. Imperfect people that have come together. The first the Bible, Acts, uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 7, I think verse 38 was what we read before, when he said, this is he that was with the angel in the church in the wilderness. Amen. Church in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness. Have you bothered to find out what the church in the wilderness looked like? They left the Red Sea. And they went three days. Exodus 15. And they found no water. And they said, Moses, Moses, Moses. Have you come to this cross in the wilderness? Moses, Moses, Moses. JJ, we sat in Egypt. Oh, you are the one that said, uh, God said, Moses, we will kill you. Moses, we will stone you. Moses cried to God. The Lord showed him. They found water. I'm sorry. They found water. And they rushed to the water. And they tasted And it was bitter. It was Mara. Ah. They said, Moses, honestly, Moses. I'm sure those who were broad chested among them were saying, just one hand like this, I will strangle you to death. See my children, they are dying of thirst. I will strangle you to death. He cried to God. God showed him a tree. He cast the tree to the water. The waters became sweet. They left that place, shore, wilderness of shore, and they got to a place called Elim. And they found 70 palm trees, and they found water again. You thought that was okay. Two chapters down the line again, there was no water again. Church in the wilderness. That was church, but it was imperfect people. They did not think twice to stone Moses. In Exodus 32 verse 1, they said, to, they said to Aaron, they said, as for this Moses that took us out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Come and make us gods. Come and make us gods. Church in the wilderness. They were not perfect. There is no place like a perfect church as long as we keep having imperfect people. Do you get it? Amen. Eh, so we we'll keep working on each other in love, allowing room for each other to grow and to see things. So that is why if you are disciplined in church, don't leave church with your disciplinary measure hanging over your head. The institution is one. The registrar is one. The VC is one. You don't have a different VC. <laughs> because the church is his family. Where are you going? Somebody said, I'm leaving that church. I'm leaving that church. They don't have love in that church. One pastor said, he said, so where are you going? She said, I'm going. I'm leaving that church. They don't have love. He said, do you have love? She said, yes, I have love. He said, why are you taking what that church means? Why are you taking it away? He said, it means what they don't have, which is what you have, then share it. Spread it. The easiest thing to do is to criticize. Praise the Lord. That's church for you. We'll continue from here again. When next we see Let's pray. Let's give thanks to the Lord for his wisdom. For his wisdom. We belong to his family. Do you know something about family? It comes to a time when the head of a family 
will leave and depart when there's cessation of life he writes a wheel he leaves the wheel behind in the wheel he names members of his family that will benefit from the wheel you don't labor to inherit what is yours in that wheel your association with the testator qualifies you automatically so you become a partaker of the inheritance based on what the will says family but you are not in the family how do you expect them to put your name in the will ab initio there's no basis for your name to feature in the will because you do not belong to that family but if you belong to that family if you are a member of that family and your name is in the wheel, what do you do? You state your claim when the time comes. You state your claim. You are a child of God. You are born again. You are in Christ. You are a partaker of a divine inheritance. You are covered in the inheritance. Your lot is secure in the inheritance. And so you can rejoice and be glad because you have an expectation of glory. But if you are not in the family, you are not in the inheritance. If you are not in the family, your name is not included in the wheel. And this morning I present an opportunity to such people. You want your name to be included in the wheel. You want to belong to the family so that you can enjoy the inheritance. How do I do that? You are asking. Simple. Just acknowledge that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross and confess him as your Lord and your Savior. Enter the family. The inheritance that some of us have been enjoying for long, you also will begin to enjoy because we have a father who does not show favoritism. God has no favorites. God has no favorites. Every child is a child. God has no favorites. In the family there's no discrimination in the family God has no favorites so with our heads bowed and our eyes closed this morning if you are saying I want to belong to God's family I want to be a partaker a beneficiary of the inheritance that God the Father has given to me through Christ just raise up your right hand why well, I'm asking you to do that is so that I can know who I'm praying for just raise up your right hand and then we will pray this is not to disgrace anybody. It is about eternity. God bless you. If you are raising the hand, raise it well because I want to pray for you. That's what I'm talking about. I want to pray for you. There's a lady here. Your menstrual cycles are very painful and you are not born again. I've described you. Just raise up your right hand and I will pray with you as well. I will pray with you. If you are raising the hand, please where you are, stand and repeat after me and say, Lord Jesus, Please forgive me my sins. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And today I identify with your death on the cross. Your blood has washed me even now. My sins are forgiven and for forgotten even now. I receive new life as I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. And I pray for your daughter. I don't see anyone up on the gallery, so I pray for your daughter. And I receive for her the assurance of salvation. Lord, her name is included in the wheel from this hour. And the inheritance becomes your portion as well, daughter of Zion. And life ceases to be a struggle and a mystery in the name of Jesus. You will serve and enjoy the Lord. You will serve and enjoy the life of God in abundance to the full till it overflows in Jesus' name. It's a new beginning for you. Father, we say thank you in Jesus' name. Can we all rise to our feet? Your lot under the inheritance is secure. And the inheritance covers everything that has to do with you.
I want to ask you a question and I want you to give an answer to it. What is it in your life today that is going on that negates the peace of God? Whatever you have identified that is going on in your life today that negates the peace of God in your life. Bring it before the Lord and declare your inheritance over it. If it is lack, declare your inheritance over it. If it is joblessness, declare your inheritance over it. If it is demonic oppression, declare your inheritance over it. Say, I declare my inheritance over you. Liberty is my portion. I'm asking us to pray for ourselves before I pray. Before I pray. If it is shame and reproach, in the name of Jesus, the honor of Jehovah is our portion and our inheritance. Claim that honor. If it is stagnation, stagnation and delays, break the backbone of stagnation and delays and declare a moving forward, a going forward. If you've been faced with contentions in life before, can you claim victory and advancement and progress? Because it is yours on that inheritance. <laughs> in the year of famine, Isaac planted. He sowed and he reaped. The Bible says he grew. He, he went forward. He grew. And he multiplied until he became exceedingly great in the land of famine. In the time of famine. The inheritance makes the difference. The inheritance is also known as the, as the covenant. Can you leverage the covenant? Can you leverage the covenant? Men might be saying there is a casting down. Men might be saying there is death in the pot. You are saying there is life overflowing. Promotion on every side. Promotion on every side. Victory on every side. No losses in the name of Jesus. I break the backbone of infirmity. I break the grip and the hold of sickness and disease conditions over the lives of the people of God in the name of Jesus. I break the power of stagnation. I command the yoke of oppression broken, destroyed over the lives of the people of God in the name of Jesus. I speak advancement and progress all around peace, all around victory. Yes, yes, every delayed approval, every delayed approval. The hour has come, the time is near. We call forth approvals, we call forth approvals, we call forth approvals in the name of Jesus. And this week you will rejoice. And this week you will rejoice. And this week you will rejoice to the glory of God the Father. Father, we say thank you. So the Lord is reaching out to you and is saying, my child, my son, my daughter, draw closer, draw closer, draw closer. Some of us are not as close as we ought to be to the Father. He's saying, draw closer. He's reaching out in love and he's saying, draw closer, draw closer to me, draw closer to me. He wants to be involved in every detail of our lives. Father, we say thank you. Lord, thank you. Let it be the beginning of new things for your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated, giving thanks and praises.